I sure hate to lose a friend like you. You won't. I mean, I, I think we could be friends just about any time. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Corey and Sean moments on Boy Meets World. You're coming with us? I'm going with you? Really? <laughs> for this list, we'll be looking at some of the best moments within the greatest TV friendship of all time. Did we miss your favorite Sean and Corey moment? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Waffles This is such a pure and sincere moment between these two best friends that we had to make room for it on this list. When Topanga goes through a crisis and worries she's getting fat, Corey doesn't understand why she's so upset. I'm really not hungry this morning. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. You don't want sex. You're not hungry. Topanga, you're starting to scare me. So naturally, he turns to his best buddy, Sean, for some advice. They sit in bed together, eating waffles, discussing what he should do. I don't understand. <laughs> These are fabulous. They're so light, so fluffy. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. What the heck's going on? Okay, let's try to figure this out. It's always been a big joke throughout the show that Corey and Sean are like a married couple. And this moment is the epitome of that. Corey? Yes, Sean? How would you feel if these two big waffles got all slathered in butter and made a little waffle? <laughs> I know what you're saying, Sean. You want seconds. Hold on. Number 9. Sean defends Corey against his brother. Before Jack Hunter ever entered the scene, Sean had another half-brother, Eddie, who existed for exactly one episode. Corey, however, isn't aware of this, even upon meeting him at the trailer park. You have a brother? A half-brother. Sean, what else you been hiding? A wife? You got kids? <laughs> Sorry, Corey, just didn't seem worth talking about. Sean warns him to stay away, but Corey doesn't understand, and they end up getting into a fight about the whole thing. But when things really get out of hand between Corey and the trailer park boys, Sean shows up to back him up. Back off, Eddie. Sean, you got no business here. Yeah, well, it looks like I do. You touch this guy again, and you've got me to deal with. Sean has always had a complicated relationship with his family, but the one person he can always count on is his true brother, Corey. And this time, it's Sean's turn to show up for him. Well, what about protecting your family? I just did. Eddie's only blood. Dear my family. Number eight. Sean comes to the hospital. Corey, this is bad. There isn't anyone who can make it better. Speaking of Sean showing up at exactly the right moment, he is the master of the grand entrance. After his father's death, Sean goes on a soul-searching road trip, unsure of when he'll return. But when he finds out that Corey's newborn little brother Joshua is dangerously sick, he shows up at the hospital to give Corey hope when he needs it most. Look, everything's gonna be all right. You think? I know. Our excitement when Sean walks out of the hospital elevator is beyond words. No matter what's going on in their own lives, these two besties always show up for each other. We got the greatest family there is, Josh. We want you to be with us so we can watch you grow and see you change and make great memories together. Number 7. Future Sean and Corey We just had to include this classic moment on this list. You know I come here every day, 4.30, for the early bird special. And every day you ask, Corey, is that you? <laughs> My mind's not as sharp as it used to be. I got new Sean, it never was. Though we get to see the whole Boy Meets World gang grow up into adulthood, this is the only time we get a glimpse at Corey and Sean as old men. When Corey's girlfriend Wendy has big ideas about their lives together, Corey has a glimpse into the future. You don't have to steal the dinner rolls. Oh, they want you to take the rolls. <laughs> no, they don't. At the prices they charge, they're lucky we don't take the silverware. In this flash forward scene, we see Corey and Wendy still together after 90 years. And who else is the other star of that possible future? Of course, it's Sean. It's adorable to see that whatever future Corey imagines for himself, his best buddy is always there with him to argue about the roles. Who? Oh. <laughs> what? They want you to take the roles! Number six, the secret handshake. You know, it just hit me. High school means we're through with Feeney. 
This is the greatest day of our lives. What would two best friends be without their own secret handshake? This shake is the epitome of 1990s BFFs. It is ridiculously long and complicated beyond reason. If you grew up in the 90s, you probably had one of these with your best friend. Whenever Corey and Sean are particularly happy, or feel the urge to celebrate a triumphant moment, they break out into this happy dance. You know what, Sean? We're in high school now. Yeah, we do have to be cooler. <laughs> hey! Oh yeah, gotcha! Give it to me! In the sequel series, we even get to see that nothing has changed over the years, and that they've kept up this goofy handshake well into adulthood. <laughs> Sean Hunter. Number 5. Sean Picks Corey Over the Cool Kids Sean and Corey have always done everything together, but when they get to high school, things start to change. You don't want to hang out with me anymore? I'm a geek! <laughs> oh, like you didn't know. Corey thinks that getting invited to a party that Sean didn't means he's the cool one, but he quickly realizes that he was only invited because he's seen as safe, and Sean is the one at the real cool party. Corey feels left behind, but attempts to let Sean spread his social butterfly wings anyway. Don't worry about me, Sean. I'm just leaving. Why? I got an order of chili cheese fries, extra gravy. Nah, you're too busy with those other guys. Sean, however, blows off all his cool new friends to hang out with his best bud. He reassures Corey that nothing has changed between them, and it never will. You think I'm cool? Of course not. <laughs> then what am I? You're Corey. I'm Sean, just like it's always been. What else do you need to know? Number 4. The Alternate Timeline Remember when we said that Corey and Sean could be best friends in any possible future? Because you're my friend, and I'm your friend. That's the way it will always be, and there's nothing complicated about that. Well, apparently this dynamic duo could be best friends in any possible past as well. Corey gets an electric shock and dreams that he's sent back in time to the Cold War. Nobody knows him, and with his knowledge of the future, he's quickly deemed a spy and a traitor to America. It's not a bomb, and it's not for spying. The Russians are just doing some space travel experiments. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> and this arms race thing, trust me. Where I'm from, no one even worries about it. Where would that be, Mr. Pizza? Moscow? Yet, when he meets the 1950s version of Sean, who's somehow even more of a loner in this universe, they become best friends all over again. No matter the year, no matter the timeline, Corey and Sean will always have each other's backs. You piped up for me when you didn't have to. We help each other out. I mean, that's what we've always done, Sean. Z. Well, if I was the type of guy that said thank you, I would. Number 3. Girl Training Corey and Sean were way ahead of their time with this one. They defy the conventionalities of male friendship. In order to write an article about what it's really like to be a girl, Corey and Sean go undercover to get the real experience themselves. If there's anything you need to talk about, my door is always open. <laughs> I'm not here to judge. It's for an article we're writing, Mr. Feeney. I am not here to judge. It's hilarious watching them help each other dress up like girls to get an inside perspective. But it's not all fun and games. They also both learn a lot about themselves, each other, and the opposite sex. It's my knee. What makes him think that it's his knee? Maybe you sent him a signal. The only signal I sent him was stop it. And he didn't listen. I'm not like that. I'm not. I never will be again. This journey is inarguably one of Corey and Sean's best schemes. Uh, please pay at the register, honey. <laughs> and tipping is not a city in China. <laughs> Come on, honey. We're out of here. Number 2. Forbidden Love as we previously stated, it's a long-running joke on the show that Corey and Sean might as well be a couple. Well, here we see that in spades. Hey, that Cinnabon was for me, wasn't it? Corey. <laughs> when Sean starts going out with a girl that does not like Corey, the two of them have to sneak around behind her back to spend any time together. They practically behave like exes who still aren't over each other. We gotta meet. But where? Paris. <laughs> That's the first place she'd look. It's pretty hysterical watching them steal away sweet moments in the library or have secret longing phone calls. Naturally, no girl could ever really come between Corey and Sean. Did you hear me? I said you're dumped. 
doesn't bother me this time, Jennifer. Because this time I realize I'm getting more than I'm losing. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Hugs. Corey gives Sean a real hug. This is a hug, okay? This is a hug. And this is when you hug somebody, when you care about them, and you want them to know that. Corey realizes Sean is the one. Till death do they part. I always thought that Topanga was the one person I could never live without. But she's gone. And, and you're here, and I'm alive, so it must be you. I'd take a bullet for you. No, Shawnee, I, I love you. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Peace amongst the classes. I'm thankful that you're my friend. And I guess I'm thankful that my parents taught me to like people for who they are. Even if they weren't lucky enough to be raised that way themselves. I love you practice. Sean warns Corey about the battlefield of love. Idiot! Once word gets around what you told Topanga, every girl's gonna wanna hear it. What, I love you? Shh, you're like a stinking canary. Bro love. Even cowboys can't stop their love. Ain't nothing wrong with wishing another man a happy Valentine's Day. Isn't that right, boys? Oh, hell no. Well, hey, I got you to do something, Luke. Oh, uh, chocolates? Oh. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day, Cor. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Wedding What would Corey and Topanga's wedding be without a major Corey and Sean moment? Hey, they're gonna need these rings. Shawnee, I knew you'd come. I wouldn't miss this, Corey. Sean's been having a really hard time as the wedding grows closer because he assumes it will mean the slow demise of their friendship. They even get into a fight at the altar. It's crazy watching them exchange insults and duke it out, all while dressed up in their tuxes. He has to care that we're not gonna be ah! friends anymore! Why do you keep saying that, huh? Why do you have to keep bringing that up? Because you will talk about it! I don't want to talk about it! Why do you think I've been sending you everywhere? We have to talk about it! I don't want to! Of course, they manage to work things out with a few sappy words. Do you really like her? <laughs> Yeah, I really do. <laughs> you sure? John, I really think I've been very tolerant here. <laughs> In the end, Sean even stands up with Corey for part of the ceremony. Topango really should have known that to marry Corey, she had to marry Sean, too. I have to talk to her now, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.